Welcome to Mining Over Canada. Join the Canadian Securities Exchange and our partners in a first-hand look into our country's vast mining landscape. Welcome to week three of the CSE Mining Over Canada. My name is Glenn Jones, President and CEO of Digi Geodata. I will be your captain again as we discover the exploration and mining activity over part of the Canadian Shield. I hope you have enjoyed your stopover in the Red Lake area. Perhaps you had a chance to take in the spectacular fall colors. So fasten your seatbelts. Our flight today will take us over parts of Manitoba and Saskatchewan. These two provinces, as with other parts of Canada, are home to world-class mines, deposits, and high mineral potential, some in underexplored terrains awaiting discoveries. We begin our journey with a hop across the border from Ontario into Manitoba over the Rice Lake Gold Belt. This belt defines the western extent of the Uchi Domain of the Western Superior Province, approximately 100 kilometers along strike to the west of Red Lake. Soon after gold was discovered in the Black Hills of South Dakota in 1879, prospectors moved north into Canada. Manitoba's first documented gold discovery took place near the town of Bissett in 1911. The Rice Lake Belt includes several significant gold deposits, including the True North Mine, part of the Rice Lake Deposit, with a total gold endowment in excess of 5.6 million ounces, which includes resources and past production, making it the largest gold deposit discovered to date in Manitoba. We turn northward towards another historic mining camp, Flin Flon. This area hosts three distinct belts, the Flin Flon Snow Lake Greenstone Belt, the Thompson Nickel Belt, and the Lynn Lake Greenstone Belt. The Thompson Nickel Belt contains several major nickel sulfide deposits. We descend to have a closer look at Thompson. The Thompson mine began production in 1956 and continues to produce today. The Thompson birch tree and pipe mines have combined production of more than 150 million tons of nickel sulfide ore. The Lynn Lake Greenstone Belt extends for 150 kilometers in an east-west direction the belt contains five significant gold deposits along two major trends, accounting for a total mineral resource of approximately 5 million ounces. Historic production from the Fox Lake mine includes significant zinc and copper and 3 million ounces of gold. The Flin Flon Snow Lake Belt is well known for its world-class deposit. This belt straddles the border between Manitoba and Saskatchewan with some individual mines producing ore in both provinces. Copper zinc production from volcanogenic massive sulfide or VMS mines dates to the first discovery at Flin Flon in 1914. Despite nearly a century of detailed exploration, new deposits continue to be found, including the Laylor deposit of Hud Bay Minerals, which saw initial production in August of 2012. Gold and silver have been produced as a byproduct of these VMS deposits. The most significant being the Flin Flon mine with 80 million ounces of silver and 5.5 million ounces of gold, and the 777 with 17.8 million ounces of silver and 1.5 million ounces of gold. The Flin Flon Snow Lake area contains 31 developed VMS mines and pods, from which more than 170 million tons of sulfide ore have been mined or are under development. The two current producing mines are 777 and Laylor. The 777 mine is planned to close in April 2022. It also holds several gold deposits and the past producing Snow Lake Gold Mine, which produced 2.5 million ounces. Rockcliffe Metals have several VMS projects in this area. We continue our travel just across the border into Saskatchewan, passing over Amisk Lake and on to the Hanson Lake area, which is the western extension of the Flin Flon Belt. The McIlvaine Bay deposit is the largest undeveloped VMS deposit in the Flin Flon Greenstone Belt. Moving west takes us to the Lorange Gold Belt. Some of the earliest exploration in the area was along the discovery of the Rottenstone deposit, which contained nickel, copper, platinum, palladium, silver, and gold. Ore from this mine was hauled to and refined in Flin Flon from 1965 to 1968. The Joe Lou Gold deposit was discovered in 1947. The mine opened in 1988 and produced 200,000 ounces of gold before closing in 1991. Other mines with limited production in the area include the Star, Contact Lake and Jasper. The area around the CB Gold Mine was explored as early as 1947, although commercial production was not started until 1990. Underground mining today continues at this mine from the Santoy deposit. The CB operation has produced over 1.5 million ounces to date. Taga Gold has properties around the CB operations. The last leg of our trip 
takes us up to the Athabasca Basin in northern Saskatchewan. This is a world-renowned area of high-grade uranium production and contains other commodities including gold, copper, nickel, cobalt, zinc, molybdenum, and rare earth elements. Appia Energy is exploring for many of these commodities, in particular rare earth elements. Uranium mines in the Athabasca Basin have produced over 1 billion pounds of U308 since 1948, with the first production coming from the Ace Fay Verna mine on the shore of Lake Athabasca near El Dorado. The most prolific mine has been MacArthur River with total production of 325 million pounds of U308. The only operating mine in the basin today is Cigar Lake. Other noticeable mines are Key Lake and Rabbit Lake, each producing over 200 million pounds. This completes our tour today. DigiGeodata has complete endowment reports available for many of the areas we have visited over the past three weeks. If you would like a copy of the reports or an exploration and activity map of these areas to further explore, send an email to Dan Subtelny or myself at sales at digigeodata.com and we will mail you a complimentary copy. We hope you have enjoyed your flight today and don't forget to get your ticket for the fourth segment of the CSE Mining Over Canada 